Hi Darkroom friends, Eugene here with Darkroom Software. In this quick video, we're going to be talking about the Add Multiple Photos option inside Darkroom Core. This is a very powerful tool and it's often overlooked, so I just want to kind of touch on it real quick so you can see some of the options. So as you can see on my screen, I have a composite that I threw together real quick. Um, I put in that it had 70 images and whenever I added this graphic right here, I'll go ahead and remove it and it'll go back to 70. Um, when I add that graphic, um, we'll use that one. it will automatically adjust depending on the size of the graphic and how, may, how much space it takes over. Now you can have it make it so the uh, the graphic is uh, able to be on top of the, the images and that options on the actual composite option so um, where is um, allow objects to overlap so if you want your logo to be right on top of somebody's face you could um, we'll go ahead and undo that and as you can see as I enlarge it it automatically moves the images out of the way but it does take away from the overall count so let's go ahead and jump back into this composite object and look and see what kind of options we have right now it's set for a fixed number of photos 70 um, I can also if I plan on using this in a variable situation where I have one class and they might have 62 kids and another class might have 73 um, I can use look up by query and I would set the query to um, all in catalog um, there are some additional more advanced um, options they're typically used with darkroom assembly so you might have um, in your query all students and then maybe at the top you have the instructors or the teachers um, set as a separate uh, multiple fo photo composite object but uh, we're, we're just going to stay general because that's typically in darkroom assembly and we're looking at core so um, you can set all in catalog and you'll see it changes just a little bit um, click OK and it's just showing you that it's kind of a variable it doesn't know how much uh, space or what size they're going to take up so the sizes would adjust to fill the entire canvas based on the number of kids and uh, so under options we also have and this is how I've kind of decorated each of those cells that I've used the rounded rectangle you can use an oval um, I also have uh, a white frame going around the image um, we have the option for drop shadow just like we would in a normal photo object uh, they're just in a little bit different area under options because the main general area is taken up by all these different options for the actual composite so um, you can set all of them to be horizontal or vertical the spacing if you look through here there's a whole bunch of different options uh, to make sure everything looks good and consistent um, and then under labels um, you can use file names a lot of times people will try to use the file name to be the person's name and that is possible you can do show labels and then under here rather than file name um, use file, file name short and that would exclude the file extension so if you had uh, each file name already named to the kids name that can save you quite a bit of time so if we save changes and we switch over to the photo workshop and I'm using just pictures of my kids but it should illustrate that what's gonna happen it's gonna take all the images in that catalog and fill in all those squares and it looks like we have one that kept it from being even you actually have an option to uh, the last row how it's justified and typically you do center so one other thing I want to talk about this uh, right now this template is set up for 11 by 14 I know a lot of people will see this and say you know in order to make those images 
big enough to see it actually has to be a lot larger size and that's kind of true one thing you want to keep in mind whenever you get into the 24 by 36 sizes um, those are typically pretty hard to render um, so once you get into those larger sizes if you notice it's having problems actually outputting a file or printing one thing you might want to do is drop the resolution down uh, right now we're at 11 by 14 and 300 if this was let's say a 40 by 60 I might want to go down to 200 or 150 and that would allow it to actually render so just a couple things you might run into when you're using this this setup um, I hope this has been helpful I hope this is maybe something you've never seen or you've always been curious about and this helps get that perfect image just the way you want I appreciate you hope you're being safe and healthy and I'll see you next time just another quick little tip I want to show you um, you can use center horizontally and it'll snap it right into the center position hi it's me again if this video has been helpful be sure to check out one of our other videos just like this one and if we've earned it please consider subscribing this lets us know people are out there watching our videos and it's making their job and their life just a little bit easier please consider subscribing right over here